Today we're going to start working on our cheeseburger collage. Now I'm going to start off with a few different scrap papers and I'm just going to keep them in a pile next to me. These are going to be what I use to make all my different and creative toppings. Now I'm going to begin with my background paper and the bottom bun. We are actually going to be starting at the very bottom of our cheeseburger and then layering the different toppings on top of each other, sort of overlapping, just like you would a real cheeseburger. So this is going to make our art project look very realistic by layering it in this way. So to begin, I probably want to make my bun paper look a little bit more like a bun. And I'm going to do that by rounding off the corners. And I'll just put those scraps to the side. Maybe I'll use those somewhere else. Now, once I have my bun, I'm going to glue it at the bottom of my paper. And I'm only going to glue the top part of my bun. I'm going to leave the bottom part loose. And I'm actually doing that on purpose so that later on I can tuck my cheeseburger wrapper underneath. So that's like a little success tip for you. If you remember to only put glue at the top and leave that bottom loose, it will make that wrapper step a lot easier for you later on. Now I'm going to glue my bun at the bottom, almost all the way at the bottom, but not quite. I'm leaving just a little bit of paper right there. All right, now for the fun part. I'm going to start creating some toppings for my burger. And when I do so, I'm going to be thinking about two art elements. I'm going to be thinking about the different shapes of each item I'm cutting out. And I'm going to be thinking about how I can use these papers to create different textures. So let's talk about both of those things right now. So we're going to start with some scrap pieces of paper and cutting out some different shapes for the toppings on our burger. I'm probably going to be using shapes from all three shape families, geometric, freeform, and organic. So the first topping I'm going to do is cheese. So I'm just going to cut out like a regular slice of cheese, and that's usually just kind of a square. So I could draw my square first before I cut it, but since geometric shapes are a little more simple, like squares, circles, triangles, I think I'm just going to cut this out freehand without drawing it ahead of time. There we go. Now I can put this topping off to the side. Now the next shape I'm going to do is going to be a freeform shape, and it is going to be some globby ketchup. So I want it to look like my ketchup is dripping down the side of my burger. So I'm going to do a shape that looks like this straight on top and then a wavy line at the bottom. Big drips, little drips, very gooey like so. Now this is a little bit of a trickier shape to cut out. So instead of moving my scissors all around every which way as I try to cut this out, I'm just gonna keep my scissor hand nice and straight in front of me as I cut and I'm going to use my helper hand to turn my paper as I go. So scissor hand is straight and helper hand is turning that paper. That's a really good trick to use if you have a tricky shape to cut out. It really makes it a lot easier. Now the next shape I'm going to do is actually going to be an organic shape. Organic shapes are shapes that come from nature and I'm going to make a lettuce leaf. So obviously leaves come from nature and I have kind of an idea to make my leaf really an interesting shape. Instead of cutting, I'm actually going to tear sort of some little random pieces because I've noticed whenever I have look at real lettuce, it kind of has different, almost like squiggledy shapes. They're not all the same. Some are big, some are small. So tearing it in this way is actually gonna make it look more like a leaf shape. So I'm gonna make myself a little collection of those over here. I'm gonna keep on going until I have a nice little pile to start my burger. Now that we've talked about shape, let's talk a little bit about texture. Texture refers to the way different things feel. So we don't want all of our papers to have the same texture. We don't want them to all be smooth and flat. 
we are gonna crumple and fold and bend some of these papers in a way that gives them an interesting texture. So my cheese can probably stay flat. That's how cheese looks in real life, so that's fine. But my lettuce, I find looks more like lettuce when I actually crumple it up really good to create some nice little bends in the paper. And then when I uncrumple it, I think that it looks a lot more like a lettuce leaf. And the other cool thing is it has a really nice contrast with my smooth papers. It's kind of interesting to have both the smooth and the crumpled together in the same artwork. So I can crumple up all my little pieces of lettuce. Now, another cool thing that I was thinking about trying is um, I was gonna put potato chips on my burger. What? That's crazy. I actually went to a restaurant one time where they put potato chips on a burger and it was delicious. But I thought my potato chip didn't look very potato chippy. So I'm gonna try folding it. I'm gonna do an accordion fold, which some of you probably know is where you fold it forwards and then backwards. Forwards and backwards, back and forth, kind of like if you've ever made a paper fan. Some people call it an accordion fold and some people call it a fan fold. So just back and forth. I'm making very tiny little folds. And then when I pull it apart, those folds make it look a lot more kind of like a ruffled potato chip. Looks like you could actually just really eat those. So now I have those to put on my burger for a different texture. Um, another cool thing that some students have asked me about is how I do my um, slices of onion. And all I do is I start out with a circle and then I draw a spiral line. And then I cut on that line using my helper hand trick that we talked about earlier. So now when I pull apart my spiral, it kind of looks like slices of onions on your burger, if you kind of let it pop up a little bit like that. Now let's start stacking our toppings onto our bun. Now when I'm gluing today, it is very important that I'm not using too much glue. So I'm just gonna take my first topping, which is a burger patty. I'm gonna shake my glue down to the tip and I'm just gonna use dot, dot, not a lot. And these are tiny dots. I'm not squeezing a big puddle. I'm also not holding my glue way up here as I'm gluing. I'm making sure that my glue is touching the paper so that my glue dots don't get out of control. They're just really small. Then I'm gonna glue this down, not all the way at the bottom of my bun, but just kind of above it like so. Then I'm gonna start taking more toppings. And I like to kind of lay them out first to see how they look. I think I'm gonna make my cheese a triangle of cheese so that it kind of fits that area better. And then same thing. I'm going to make sure that I'm using just tiny glue dots. And I'm gonna just glue the top of some of my pieces because I don't wanna glue them down totally flat. I want some of these different textures to stand up a little bit. So to do that, I'm only gonna put glue at the top section, just like we did on the bun and then the bottom section can kind of stand up and be fluffy. Also, I'm not gluing it way up here. I'm overlapping a little bit with my last topping. This is gonna make our burgers look really full and overflowing with goodies. I'm just gonna hold that on for a few seconds, just like so. Once again, tiny glue dots at the top overlap and then choose my next topping. As you're working today, really try to make sure that you don't see any glue peeking out from behind your shapes. 
If you see glue peeking out from a shape when you glue it on, that means that your dot is way too big. Your glue should be totally hidden behind the paper. Also, as you're working today, make sure that you can't see any of your background paper through your toppings. If you can see some of that background paper, you can always find a little piece of topping and sneak it in there with some glue so that it will cover it up. Same thing if you have any sort of weird looking corners that are showing, we can be an artist problem solver and add a little piece of something there to make that area look good. Don't worry about finishing your burger today. You definitely will not get done because we are really taking our time to be creative and use our supplies correctly.